Hi, and welcome to day 112 of our teen devotional. Let's have a moment of prayer, um, our reading, and then our lesson for today. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord God, just thanking you once again for all that you have done for us. Thanking you, Lord God, for your words of wisdom and inspiration and teaching for the past 111 days. Father, we ask, Lord God, that as we mark upon this 112th day, that, Father, you will give us new eyes to see, new ears to hear, and, Father, a new heart that understands. A heart, Lord God, that is created and, Lord God, fashioned and molded like yours. Father, we thank you for the opportunity of coming closer to you and learning more of your word. And, Father, we give you all the honor, glory, and praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your reading for today comes from the book of Judges, chapter 9, verses 1 through 57. And then the book of Luke, chapter 23, verses 26 through 56. So our lesson for today actually comes from the book of Luke, and it talks about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Many times, whenever we think of the crucifixion of, of Christ due to movies and, and things that, uh, that we've read, we always think about or we hear about the physical, the physical beating, and even with the physical um, beating that he took and the abuse that he took even that's that's a lot um to take that's enough right but i think a a bigger a bigger part and the part that we face a lot i think the part that we can relate to and allow us to see things differently is the emotional and the um verbal abuse the insulting that that we need to consider. You know, many times whenever we think about the, the beating of Christ, we can't relate to that. We can't relate because we have never um, been beat like that before. We, we can't, we've never been beat like that and then we're here to talk about it. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but I'm saying that most of us that, that, are, that are watching this video, we have never been beaten like that before. So you can't even imagine what it feels like physically. But we have all been betrayed. We have all been insulted. We have all had people to call us names. And that's the part that I want us to, to connect with Jesus today. Can you imagine that you are a um, beautiful, beautiful person? You have always done the right thing at the right time to people always. Your father is wonderful. Your father is awesome. Your father is powerful and, and he's glorious and he's, he's pure and he's right. You come from a place of, you come from a very good home. You have never had to lack for anything. You have had the most wonderful experience most wonderful life and you come down you're visiting a place that is not your home and you're here on an assignment you have promised your father that you would come to this foreign land and carry out some tasks for him uh, because you love him you, you obey and so you're here and you've you know you've made friends and you know you experience some um, the culture of, of the new place that you're in, and then you know that it's getting close to the time where you have to fulfill what you promised your father that you would do. And you're you become a little bit fearful, you're it's overwhelming, it's a lot to deal with. But you know you have to you have to go through with it. Now, all of your, your friends that you have there, you know that one of your friends is not right. You're, one of, you know that one of your friends is, is going to turn on you. And there's nothing that you can do about it because you are here to do something for your father. And you watch this friend leave out. You know what he's getting ready to do. You know exactly what's getting ready to happen. And this friend turns on you. And you're watching this take place. And you, are, you have gotten in trouble. You've been arrested. Uh, you, you're being treated as a criminal and you know that you didn't do anything wrong, but you know that you can't say anything. You can't defend yourself because you're here on a very important assignment. 
and there are people that are uh, jeering at you and, and insulting you and spitting in your face and calling you names and you know they think they know who you are and so they're asking you to prove yourself well if you're such and such then why don't you do this or if this is who you say that you are why don't you do this you can't say anything and then you're brought before the main person that can that can make a decision that can turn all this around and he's asking you who are you why are you here why are you doing this and you can't give him an answer that he needs to set you free because you have to go through with this assignment. This is all before the physical beating. And then you go through this physical torture. So you're, you're being physically tortured, but in your mind, you are hearing and seeing the people that have talked about you and, and your face still smells of spit because people have spit on you and you're, you're, you're still emotionally drained of being interrogated and questioned and, and taunted and, and struggling of, should I show them who I am or should I keep quiet? Because you, you're like everyone else. You have feelings, right? All these things are going on and your, and your, your mind is, is working overtime and you're right now you're being tortured. For nothing and then while you're sitting there at the end of your torture where your flesh can't take it anymore your body can't take it anymore your mind is exhausted all you would really want to do is just go and rest and act like this has never happened but you are still there to feel the pain to feel the anguish to have these things playing in your head over and over again and there are two people on the side of you that have done really, really bad things. And they're arguing about who you are and you're, and you're sitting right there. Talk about awkward, right? They're arguing about who you are and you're right there. You're too exhausted to fight. You hurt too much to move. You're just there. And you're still hurting. You're still hurting physically and emotionally. You're still hurting. One says, continues to throw insults at you. So you're sitting here and, and, and you have been through enough, right? And there's one more that is still throwing insults at you. And then there's one that says, you know what? I know who you are. And you are here and you don't deserve it. I deserve it, but you don't. Don't forget about me. And you have that one last muster of energy to say, God, Father, I get it. Father, I understand. And you turn to this person and you say, there is a place for you in my home. There is a place for you where I'm going. You will not be forgotten. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what Christ went through for you and for me. It wasn't just the physical beating. It wasn't just, I mean, even though that's enough, but it's all these other things that he went through for you and for me. And that should give us enough appreciation in our hearts, enough love in our hearts to tell someone else how good God is. To tell someone else about the greatness of God. The power, the wonder of Jesus Christ. The love that Jesus had for us. To go through all of that for you and for I. For you and for me. And so my prayer for you today is that you will think about all that Jesus went through. I know we can't relate to the to the physical part of it, but we can relate to that. We, we can relate to that part. And every time you think about why you should 
follow Christ, why you should attend church, why should you live a life that is holy and righteous, why you should do all these things. You think about all that Jesus went through just so you could have an opportunity to be with God, the Father in heaven. And I think whenever you remind yourself of that, I think it will humble all of us and appreciate him all the more and tell someone else about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Most gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that Jesus went through for us. Father, we pray that we would never take what he has done for us for granted. We pray, Lord God, that we would never uh, not say that we can't show our love for Jesus because we can't relate. Father, you have shown us today just the magnitude of all that Jesus went through for us. And Father, we pray that as the, the, the robber on his right that said, we deserve everything that we get. But because of Jesus, he doesn't deserve what he did, what happened. And Father, may our prayers be, remember us when you come back. Remember us when you come again so that we may have a place with Jesus, with God the Father in heaven forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.